problem, um, what they want us to do is find the right, uh, or write the standard form of the equation. So when looking at this, um, first of all, we need to determine it's going to be horizontal or vertical. So again, what I like to do is just kind of plot the points. My vertices are at 0 plus 5 and 0 negative 5. So, ladies and gentlemen, am I going to have a vertical or a horizontal? Vertical. Vertical, right? So therefore, I know now exactly the formula that I'm going to have to use, which is going to be x minus h squared over b squared plus uh, um, over a squared. Well, no, it's going to be vertical. So y minus k squared is going to have a squared. Remember, if it's vertical, your major axis A is going to be under your Y. If it's horizontal, the A will go under your X. Okay? All right. So, we know here's our two vertices. And that's all we got. Now, we also know the center is at 0, 0. Right? So, ladies and gentlemen, do I really even need my H and my K right now? They're 0, 0, right? X minus, X minus 0 is just X. So I'm going to simplify this equation just to x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals 1. Make this equation a little bit simpler. All right? All right. But they did tell us it goes through a point 4, comma 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. What is that for? What is well, what is a point? Remember, we actually even talked about it before in class again. So we have an a, b, and x and y. We know A is the distance from the center to your vertice, which in this case is 5, right? So if A equals 5, then we can say A squared equals 25. 25. So let's rewrite that. Okay? But our problem is we don't know what B is or we don't know what the distance to the foci is. But we do know what a point is. X, we do know point 4, 2, which... Remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you're dealing with an equation and your x and y coordinates represent all the possible points on your graph. Because remember, for this ellipse, how many points are there on an ellipse? 1, 10, 20, 30? So many. There's infinite many, right? And remember, x and y represent all of those points. But if they give you one point that's on the ellipse, we can use that to help us find our other values. So what we're going to use is we're going to say, all right, 4 is going to be x squared. Actually, I'll just keep it. I'll put it plug this in a second. So we'll say 4 equals x squared divided by b squared, which we do not know, plus y squared, which we'll say is 2. And then we said a squared, which is 25, equals 1. Now we got to do a little mathematics. 16 over b squared equals 4, I'm sorry, plus 4 over 25 equals 1. Well, guys, going back to algebra 1, I know you're going to get it. You automatically get like the sickness. You see, oh no, I have fractions and I have to add, subtract, and do all that kind of stuff. But that's all we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is just go back to I promise it won't be that bad. So now, to solve for b squared, I'll subtract um, minus 4 over 25. Can I like, cross multiply them? Is that possible? You can't cross multiply them until you have a proportion, which we'll do next, which means we're going to have a fraction equal to another fraction. So now I have 16 over b squared equals, well, what's 1 minus? 21 over 25. Well, 1 minus 4 over 25, 1 rewrites to 25 over 25, minus 4 <coughs> over 25, which, yes, is 21 over 25. Now, you have a proportion. So now, if you want to solve by cross multiplication, you can. There's other ways to do it. So you can do 16 times 25 equals b squared times 21. Now, I don't have my calculator 400 with me. Equals this is what? 400. Equals. Uh, 21 squared. And then you divide by 21. Wait, is that a 216? No, it's 21 times b squared. Equals 